Check, 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 Mike, check, check. Professor Millie Mill, the hood postman. You know the vibe. Let's see, I've got one person in the chat. Wait for my peeps to show up. We are back, we are back. Professor Millie Mill, the hood postman. Be sure to drop by the mail room. Click the notification bell. So when that dope content drops, to feel like the person at 15. Guys, let me know if you can hear me out there. Somebody send me, send me a message. Let me know you can hear me okay. What's up, big bro? What it do, ball gang? What's good? What's good, man? We are back. We are back in the house, man. Hopefully, we can uh, talk about a few things today that'll be inspirational, helpful, and educational at the same time but at the same time i'll probably drop a, a little story in the, in the in the back end of it for you man about my homie bebop you know what i mean or anna williams hey what's going on with you i see you in there can you hear me okay good evening Melly. man cowboy what's good bro how you feeling today Okay. As you can see myself, I'm pretty good. I'm doing well. Uh, John William, pretty C, the city, the city, the city. Okay, I'm well, good, good, good. Yes, you can hear me, man. That's good, man. I'm glad to see you guys are in the chat. And uh, you got here to, uh, well, yes, yeah, sounds good. You're in the big screen. <laughs> Yes, I am. I'm in the big screen today. <laughs> it's interesting. How are you doing today? Oh, Mrs. Visible? Yes. Oh, Mrs. Visible. That's good. Okay. So we got three. We got seven people in the chat with three thumbs up. You guys, be sure to press the thumbs up. Hit them goddammits, man. You know? I think I'm going to start doing like a goddamn it Friday or something, you know what I mean? And we just got outrageous with it, you know what I mean? Just cover any and everything. Oh, you just came back from Arizona? AZ? Very hot in Arizona. <laughs> Probably very hot out there, I'm sure. It's hot enough out here, but that's a whole nother level of hotness in AZ. Trust me, you can't even survive out there without air conditioning in the home or in the car. Yeah, we got four likes, nine people in the chat. Be sure to hit that thumbs up on the way or drop a thumbs down. I don't know. Drop, be sure to drop a comment down below because today is going to be kind of interesting. I got a, you know, I got a couple of things I want to talk to you guys about and hopefully you guys can uh, grasp what I'm saying and where I'm coming from. I just want to be, hope, keep my people informed and keep them up to date. And just give them the very best of what I can give them, you know what I mean? Because I know our people are going to some things. Speak on the Hebrew, homie, or the hood back in the day. <laughs> right on, man. No, it's, don't drop a thumbs down, just up. There you go. <laughs> right on, Marlene. Correct me, correct me, correct me. So let's get to it. It's Wisdom Wednesday, right? So no one can make you feel inferior unless you give them your consent. Do not give folks your consent because God created you in the best of circumstances. The best of circumstances. So you're the best of creation. So therefore, no one should be able to ever, ever, ever make you feel inferior about anything. Continue to be that person you are. So, in the last few days, we have witnessed some atrocities, and we had uh, experience right there on the border, the Texas border and Del Rio, Texas, right? And it's kind of reminiscent of times that we don't thought had been forgotten. We witnessed white men who had the audaciousness to be on horseback with whips in their hand, and all we saw was them whipping black people. We didn't care that they were from Haiti. They could have been from Dominica. They could have been from Africa. They could have been from Jamaica. They could have been from anywhere. That doesn't matter. That's neither here or there. 
the fact that we all, hey Crystal, I see you, the fact that we were all witness up close in front of white men on horseback beating black people. Because they wondered, you gotta understand what it took and what they had to endure to come over a whole big old ocean to travel to the wilderness of North America in search of a freedom that they speak about often that we know well too much that it's can be all it's all like a jack in the box it's like they talk it but are they really about that life so we're going to de delve into that today you know what i mean and i want to specifically point a finger and I'm pointing the finger at these individuals that call themselves the squad. Defenders of freedom, defenders of the constitution, defenders of democracy, defender of the people. They call themselves the squad, okay? That is the Alexandria Ocasio, the, Il, the Ilhan Omar, the Ayanna Presley, uh, what is the guy, Jamal Bowman, Corey Bush, and Rashida Tlaib. These people happen to call themselves the squad because they believe wholeheartedly in the Constitution and they press the Constitution. It's all gas, supposedly, from, from what I've seen or the way they uh, presented it when they first came on after the, uh, the election, you know. Yeah, be sure to drop out the mail room. <laughs> Click the notification bell, like, subscribe, and drop a comment down below. So when you see these individuals being silent, there's no mention of the people, what's going on with the people down in Haiti. There's no mention of the people that they saw witness because the whole world seen the image of white men on horseback with whips in their hand. And all we can say is that they're, they were whipping black people, people of color. And this this can't settle. This 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 can't go. This should not settle. This should not be left over undone. We got to address this, and we got to address these people that we keep voting in the office, and let them be representatives of us, because they do not. Obviously, they do not really represent us. There's 23, 21, 23 people in the chat room. Please press the thumbs up on the way in. We should have just as many thumbs up as we do with people in the chat room. So today, I want to share with you guys a little something. About eight months ago, there was a study done. And you guys may not have heard about this study. But the study was, it was a hidden discovery. A hidden discovery of DNA. Now, they was quite surprised by what were the findings in this discovery? And of course they're not talking about it because it's so favorable to us. It's so favorable, you know what I mean? And, and they're really trying to keep it hidden. They don't want this information to get out because it's about you, my melanated brothers and sisters. And what happened is that for over 400 years, 400 melanated people have survived the worst mental and spiritual and bludgeoning of any people in in the whole history of mankind we have survived that there has been in the recorded history of mankind Goob, what's going on, man? I see you. I've been waiting for you to go live, Billy Bell. Didn't it say with you? <laughs> you did the push-ups, man? Did you do the push-ups, man? That's what I want to know. Did you get the push-ups in? Somebody told me you got them in. I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, I wish I could have been there to witness you get the push-ups in. But back what I was saying, in the recorded history, no people have as been bludgeoning as the melanated people. Other words, what we refer to black people or African American, whatever you choose. I like to call you melanated people because black and uh, African American are constructs 
they were given to you. You didn't choose those things for yourself. So the study of all uh, geneticists, 17 geneticists around the world, they did this study, right? It was called a DNA series. And what they did, they took, what they found, they studied the orangutan, and they found that the orangutan had three DNA series. Because the study was evolving around the, um, the intelligence. They wanted to detect the intelligence level of, of certain species. So when they did the study, they found out that the orangutan itself had three genetic series. Then they went to the ape. The ape had four genetic series, right? Right on, Yusuf, I see you. So when they get to the chance to pan Z, the chimpanzee had five genetic series, right? And when they get to the... Uh, when they get to the... Uh, what else? The chimpanzee five. They get to the European, the Spaniard, they get to the uh, Russians, Germans, and all these other ethnicities, ethnicities right? They found out they had six. I got five there in one I'm done. Six genetic series, right? Six. Towards intelligence. But lo and behold, when they got to the black man, the man that which come from the region of Africa that which our ancestors come from, they found out they had nine. Nine genetic series of DNA. That means they were more intelligent, far superior to any other group. And what's happening that when you know these, this is how we became champions in the grant. What's up? What's up, Stan? I see you. This is how we became champions. See, because here's what they did, man. They failed to teach us our history. They failed to teach us about our science. They failed to even tell us that utmost was the creator of algebra. They failed to tell in Hotep was the creator and father of medicine. So our, our, our very existence and our people and our ancestors are written in the hieroglyphs. Our artifacts and all things explain our whole history. But when you look for theirs, the ones that they printed in the printed page, because I treat the Bible itself as like the printed page of a comic book. That's just my perspective. Don't have to be yours. But it's all like Kabuki theater because there's no burial, there's no artifacts, there's no tombstones. There's nothing to indicate, give you indication that some of the people that they speak about in that book really ever, ever, ever existed. But what happens when they find out when you level the playing field, when you level the playing field for our people, we take it over. Football, basketball, uh, track and field, any type of sports, tennis, we become tops in those fields. But by them switching the uh, the educational system, but the, the educational system that they created doesn't favor us in one way. It diminishes and it takes away from our people. This is some of the slick stuff that they continue to do, man. And when you see stuff like, when you see stuff like people riding on horseback with whips and whooping on people and all that stuff, man, you can't, it, it can't do nothing but drive you to anger. Slick in the building. <laughs> they want to demolish our origin. You're right. And I just want to, you know what I mean? I just want to tell you guys about this study. You know what I mean? And when I find, when I'm able to put the study together and tell and talk to you about in this whole totality and everything that it entails, it's an amazing study about our people that they're really trying to keep secret. They don't want it to come out at all. They just don't, you know what I mean? Because it just, it just proved, man. It proves our very existence. Because our existence, like I say, is written in the hieroglyphs. Big Devil, I see you. What's out there? 
the railroad Cali laid off a few. Who got laid off, Dale? Okay, Melly, do you think it's possible for us to greatly reduce our self-hatred for each other and how? I think it, I think it that if we get on cold, we get on cold as a people with one another, we start respecting each other, we start treating, we can even take, we can even take a page from the, uh, the Nation of Islam. Because one thing they do, regardless if they believe in in, uh, in the Scientology and all the other stuff they have now and adapted as a way of life, they do get along. And they get along quite well. Right on, uh, Stan, you're hollering at the ladies. DC, what's up right there, Howard? Sometimes these questions go by so quick. Let me see. Let me pop that back in. All right, chat. So, to the liberals say yeah the liberals are something else man rap Compton, what's up man i love one what up rap what up rap that's my love one man what's going on slick where you at man where you at man i think i like the other way man i don't i don't know if i take as where's the little home girl at <laughs> cynthia she is a, she is a little home girl But anyway, I want to talk to you guys today about my homie Bebop, man. I don't get to talk about Bob, man, because, you know, he's had a very uh, long journey. He come from a very uh, dark place. He come from a place where uh, a lot of men, few men return from, you know what I mean? My homie Bobby. His name is Bobby Earl Harper. We all call him Bebop. He was Bebop before we started crossing out the B and they started crossing out the C. And uh, when I think about it, man, I think about how how he was out there in them streets, man, and the type of individual he was. He was kind of the kind of guy, man, if you had a situation, man, 110% you wanted Bobby Harper, which you wanted AK Bebop. And he wound up doing, he gave up 39 years of his freedom. And I'm not trying to justify it, I'm not to make it light of it. And uh, I'm sure that he looks back at it and, you know, try to figure out was it really worth it and all that. You know, I'm sure he. He wrestled with that mean, but I love that guy dearly, you know what I mean? Because when we was growing up, right, we was young, right? Bebop, man. I call him Two Guns Bobby Harford. <laughs> that man had always, every, any given time, had them two goddammits on him. Kept them two goddammits. Never caught him without it. And was always ready for the challenge. One of the straightest. I'm talking about. I don't know if the man went to the to the range. Or he was taught. Or he was trained to you know to react in the way he would react. Man but it was. Uh, reminiscent of seeing a, like a Denzel Washington. In one of them movies with two pistols in his hand. <laughs> That's just how good he was. You know. Very good, man. Uh, Left-handed, but maybe even ambidextrous because his ability to handle both of them goddamnits. And boy, did he handle them. He, uh, I remember one afternoon, man, he stayed on Rose Street, and him and Pat was together. Pat, they lived by the middle of uh, Dexter 80 Gangster, the homie 80 Gangster. We, his name was Poncho, but we called him 80 Gangster. Because he got on in 1980 exactly. And uh, this is about the last time I saw Bob at that time was 80, 81. Before he went away for 39 years. And uh, he had on, hit a pawn shop. 
and man, he cleaned the whole pawn shop. I mean, I'm talking about cleaned it out, top to bottom. He had long guns, short guns, pistols. So when I get over to his house, I come in, he said, man, what you want? I just looked, man, it was just so many, man. It was so many just everywhere. I really, I just like, wow, I was, it was hard for me to choose. So I grabbed a four five and I grabbed a Nina. And I tucked them real quick and the other homies was there. You know, Turtle was there, uh, Baby Gangster was there, Bad Habit Rabbit. Uh, let's see, we had Sloan, All-American. We had, let's see, I don't know if Juju was there or Rab. Let's say Rab, my homie. You know, because he lived down the street. I don't know if he was there, but it just, I remember Kizzy, 80 Gangster, Hub, you know, T-Bone, light-skinned T-Bone, black T-Bone. I'm telling you, he had an arsenal. An arsenal. And I can only imagine when the Compton PD or the F Troop, the Compton Dump Dumps, got wind of what had occurred and what was about to take place. And uh, to show you how my homeboy is, right? Somebody has sure enough stitch, right? So, police is at his front door, banging on the front door, boop, 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 boop. It's Police Ridge, Bookman, and, and, and whoever else was with him at that time, right? And uh, what they did, they actually, they actually made a proposition with Bob because they knew that the situation was very volatile and it was dangerous and you was dealing with a bunch of hothead youth. And we were looking we was looking to cause problem. No matter where the problem came from, we was gonna we was gonna be at the front of it. At the front of it. But by us having a uh semi ass relationship because Reg and Bookman and all of not Bookman, but Reg and uh, what is that white boy Beckman? They used to always be in our hood, always own us, you know, always, you know, trying to catch us up, trying to talk. Nobody talk to no police. The fuck y'all want? Get out of here, you know, stuff like that. And um, anyway, they had us dead to right. They surrounded the whole house. I tried. I was getting ready to go out the back. I looked out the back door. I see the police all in the backyard. I was thinking about climbing out of the window and climbing on top of the police all on the side of the house. So they tell Bob, listen, just give us all the guns back. And uh, we ain't gonna take nobody to jail, but you gotta come with us, Bob. You gotta come with us, you know? And B-Bob being the guy he was, man, but at this time I'm stashing, I'm putting pistols and window seals trying to put them wherever I could put them to hope that you know they don't find them or whatever sure enough they come in they start they washed us out one by one it's, I'm telling them there's a line of cops out there and everything searched us because we don't took all the guns so we ain't got no guns on us at this point so they go into the they go into Pat's house they start searching turn it upside down and sure enough they come up with every last one of them fists. I'm talking about all of them. We threw them all in the backyard. They just, man, they didn't leave there until they, they I think they must have came with an inventory of this. I'm not for sure about that, but it was interesting how they found every last one of them. Just interesting. You know. <laughs> I was in Wendy Woo, Jesus. Yeah, we threw them everywhere. We threw them everywhere. We had them, you know. And uh, sure enough, they took the homie in, you know. They took him in. You know. He didn't stay in there long. You know, he didn't stay in there long because that was like some of the earlier stages. We could have been involved. Let's see. I could have been involved. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So I had to be about 20, 21 at the time. So Bob could have been about 22, 23. He was a couple of years older than me. So, and then we also, my homie Jack Off Sleep, I forgot to mention he was there, not the Jack Off, the Jack, you know, you can imagine, only imagine why he got that name, right? The Jack Off Sleep, cold character right there. I'm talking about cold character. See, 
in the 70s and the 80s was a very different breed of dudes, man, from these dudes right now. These dudes were stern, they were studied, they was calculating, and they went after individuals that they knew would come after them. They didn't go after the people that was weak or lesser than. That's they what they did. And that, was, that came from both sides, whether it was Pyro or Crip, you know. Because what you got to understand, during that time, to even be a Crip, you had to go to boot camp. And boot camp consists of you run down a line or you get up, you get, you get it up with a few of the homies or whatever. You might get a busted lip or whatever, but that was okay. You was tested. Your metal was tested. You was solid. You know what I mean? Because the dudes that was capable of, of, of stealing or, or snitching and all that stuff, they didn't come over there and mess with that, man. Because they wasn't cut out for it. They wasn't cut from that claw. They couldn't handle that type of uh, scenario. That when you got dudes punching them, you know, seeing if you really belong to this group. And if you didn't belong to the group, it, was not, it, wasn't, it wasn't even necessary for you to be the self-involved factual. You're right. There was no need for you to involve yourself in it. We had patrols back then. We would be on top of the houses at night. We would protect our neighborhood, our community from outside invaders, uh, outside uh, people we felt that was a threat to our tribe. You know, not necessarily looking for trouble. But because you gotta understand, we were uh, in a in a in a tough situation. When I say tough situation, the situation required real thinkers, real strategists, and people who were not a plot and plan and and initiate a mission and complete the mission. Yet it was a discipline. We was under a discipline, and that's. And that's how you got to put it. We was very, we was, all of us was under a discipline, unlike today's time. These guys are not under a discipline. Simple as that. It's simply the way I can put that. They were not under a discipline. And, uh, man, we would go to parties. I remember the schoolboy crush. Uh, Alon, Rock and Roll Gangster, and all that different stuff back then. Uh, More about Zap and all that stuff back then, you know. And uh, I remember one time we was in a, a party in Linwood, and the homie Bebop said, "Cuz my mind is ticking on dynamite." And he la 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 inside the people house inside the people's house and these people got about nine holes in their ceiling <laughs> and i say homie why you do that he said cuz i told him my mind was ticking on dynamite <laughs> and that was the time you know when the mantras you know what i mean like those mantras where we talked about we went to the places where the people noticed told us not to go you know if we can't get it it can't get got Put the word out, you know, that, that was during the time all those mantras were created, you know. Hard D and dynamite, all you don't F, we blow up, you know. Y'all know I don't like to curse, so I try to, you know, soften it for you, you know what I mean? Just put it away where you can understand it. In other words, I put it where the goats can get it, you know, you understand what I'm saying. And uh, I try to refrain from using profane language because I think people use profane language when they only lost for a better expression of what they're trying to say. So when you see a people that's always just F this, they, 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 it's because they lost for words. So you want to be the best version of yourself, so you want to try to give people more substance, more food, and just give them, you know, give them that, 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 uh, that vocabulary nutrition that they deserve, something to make them feel good, make them think, you know what I mean? So that's where I'm at with that. So we got 46 people in the chat room and only 32 likes. Somebody is not pressing the thumbs up when they come in. They just, 
Man, do y'all love Professor Millie Mill? The Hood Post, man? I told you, be sure to drop by the mail room, click the notification bell, drop, uh, like and share, drop a comment. So when the dope content hit, it'll feel like the first and the 15th. Support the platform by hitting the like button. There you go. Look at you, man. Look at the people, man. I got that. <laughs> Ooh, the riches are at work up in here. They at work. I'm seeing y'all do your thing, and I'm just like, just kind of just going on, you know. Miss Reed, I see you. How you doing? How you doing? Everybody, how you doing in the chat room? Mr. Goob, show at... Yeah, I, I subscribe, Goob. I subscribe, man. I'm there, man. I'm there with you, man. So, back to Bebop, right? So, Bebop was such a... He was such a debonair, and, 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 and uh, this guy would be... He would go on missions, man. I'm talking about people that he thought was coming after him. He would get on them, on they bumper. I seen him get shot, right? I'm in Oaks Park. He gets shot, and we all up in Oaks Park. The homie Jelly, and I think of Baby. They pull up on the on the on the on the Hyundai Elites or Sprees at the time, or the Mopeds. That didn't have the Sprees yet. We had Mopeds. They pull up on the mopeds. Bob got a got a got a, a, a cast on his leg, on his ankle. And I think at the time, I think uh, China Dog had got him, right? I'm not for sure. Don't, don't misquote me on that. Don't quote me on that. Don't hold my feet to the fire on that. I shouldn't even say it that. But anyway, bring them goddamnits. So um, they, they take off, man. Come back, man. Showed up, man. They went over there, man. They, this man has some, he, he rolled up in the middle of circumstances and situations and let him know who he was and what he was there for. And subscribe right on Crystal, and subscribe. Good looking out on the likes, I appreciate that. I really do, I really appreciate that. I thank you very much for, for you guys uh, participating and supporting this platform. Cause I, I mean, you know, I get elated, I get, man, it's, I feel delightful when I be talking to you guys on these circumstances, and uh, uh, I'm going to call you back, and uh, I get to chat with you guys, you know what I mean, and just go over a little bit of history, and it's a, you know, it's an amazing thing, you know what I mean, and not that I want to be an advocator or any type of violence, because you guys always know that I always say history is medicine for a sick mind, for within history, it has a variety of human experiences that we can teach from and learn from. We must free ourselves from ancestral trauma, master those soul lessons, cultivate space for the abundance to flow. And that's why we're here. That's because we, we talk about this thing. It's sort of like therapy. For me, it's like therapy, you know, to be honest with it. You know what I mean? When I get to talk about these things and just kind of put it out there, you know what I mean? Detroit, check it in. What's up, OG? I appreciate you, Detroit. You know, wisdom Wednesday, you know what I mean? No one can make you feel an inferior unless you give the scent. That's the wisdom right there. No one. You know, so I feel pretty comfortable and, and good about talking about the past, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I'm going to utilize the past to show how you can direct yourself in energy and time and take it from that that negative space because all spaces are filled with something both negative and positive you get to choose which one you want to be in because heaven and hell is right here you either in heaven or you in hell and that's just the matter the fact of the matter you know what i mean because once again we survived the most bludgeoning bludgeoning spiritual and physical trauma known to mankind our people did and we survived it. And we came out of it like champs, you know what I mean? Just think about everything we had to do or tolerate during those times, you know? And then we get into the 70s and we get thrown throw in. Let me know, I hit that like when you say I'm a bad goob. I would know you could do it more than two push-ups. <laughs> right on, goob. I know you could do 50, man. I heard you got the 50, right? Did you get the 50? Right on, bro. Right on, man. Put some respect on my name. <laughs> Put some respect on that man's name, y'all. So, again, back to Bebop, man. So, 
and he got caught up in his situation, man. This was the same year, man, I saw Bebop go away. I saw Jack Off Sleep go away. I saw Whiskey go away. I saw Big Rob go away. I saw Tiny Man go away. I saw The Twin go away. I saw Gangster go away, you know. I saw countless of my homies go away for a long time, man, you know. Some of them longer than others, you know what I mean? And I always thought about them, wondered what was going on with them because, you know, the communication systems weren't as good as they are today. So, you know, and, and I don't think people, you know, kept up. Nah, they ain't done with the cars yet. People kept up with each other's addresses like that. And I think a few homies wrote homies and stuff, did with their kid. It wasn't too, like, when me, Mondo, and Gangster Turtle got on, that we start, man, you know, looking out, you know what I mean? Sleep, my homie's Henry Thomas, he's still there right now when most of the homies are out. Rab, what's going on? Bobby set the tone for a lot of us. And yeah, you're right, Rab, he set the tone, man. He set the tone, man. He set a high bar, too, because like I say, man, the man can handle two things from both hands, two goddammit, you know. He was no joke. Where did you come from? Where did this come from? I'm just getting notification. Hey, people. <laughs> What's up, Lisa? <laughs> yeah, he was very uh, assured, you know. Yeah, just, just a good homie. Still is a good homie. And he's out now doing great, working, taking care of his grandchildren, enjoying his life, hanging out with his cousin Mark, his brother Phil, his sisters, you know, not involved in any type of nonsense or anything that has remotely, anything remotely close to uh, anything illegal, you know, looking good, you know what I mean? getting back with the ladies, you know what I mean? So, yeah, he's doing real good, man. I'm proud of him, man. And I just thought I would shout him out and just talk about a little bit of him. But then at the same time, even though I, I talk, told you about some things that, you know, wasn't necessarily good, but now, if you look at him now, if you look at him now, you wouldn't know that he was that guy. He was that guy. He was a guy, really fearless, man. I remember one time, me, him, Mr. Booby, Jack off Slip, we coming out of Boob's driveway, man. We didn't get to the driveway, man. The cat like pulled up and just dumped on us. <laughs> Bob was on it again, you know. <laughs> just on it. Always ready, man. Always ready, man. He was just always ready. But he was like just a very good person to have around, man. And uh, we never left our loved ones hanging. If there was something going down, man, we told our loved ones to get off the street. We didn't leave them out there. We didn't do like what they do today with this internet stuff. You got people coming from Reno Valley, Lake Elsinore, Culver City, or wherever they come from. And they come to Compton and say, hey, look at me, I'm over here. You know, I'm in your hood. Where you at? Blah, 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 you know just talking head, you know, jumping their cars and go back to wherever their city they come from. And then when the guys see the see the uh, the live feed or it's on the, whatever it's on, whether it's on Instagram or whatever, they respond, right? So they go to the locations where the guys are at. When they get there, they not to be found. But what happens often is those circumstances and scenarios, there are people just normal everyday people just kind of just walking around minding their own business and they wind up catching the blunt of somebody else's confusion it is so dumb man it is so dumb man because here's the thing man if you got a problem with an individual i highly recommend it man that you go sit down and have a discussion with that person because you'll be surprised what you may find out and what may evolve out of that. Because a lot of what people don't really know, we have a great deal more in common than we do not in common. But the creator gave us the greatest tool we can ever have. That's the tool of communication, the ability to communicate. 
Lisa Jackson, hope you're feeling well. You feeling well? You was feeling bad, Lisa? Corny and deadly. You're right. Overstood. Why should you have to mimic our style? Blue, what is that? Blue, red, rolls out of the concrete called in ninjas. Been after the gold, you know. Yeah, okay. Man, you guys are dropping these emojis, man. I'm excited about this. Seeing you guys with your wrenches in your hand just rocking. <laughs> Doing your thing, you know. Eyeball Torres facts. So how do how do we how do we begin to heal? Kugels is essential when dealing with the thugs. Yeah, it is essential. How do we heal? How do we begin begin the healing process? Where do we start? Because if you think about it, this thing you call crib, thing you call pyro, or you dog damu or Kiway, they all evolved on a group setting. And I would like to add another word, mercurial. Mercurial, they, they came from mercurial mindset. Something that's unpredictable, that hadn't all of a sudden, that's wayward, that just, that is spontaneous. It's like a spontaneous thinking. You know, reactionary. The best way, the best way I can describe it. You know, but it all came from group settings. So I think if it was started from a group setting, it has to end from a group setting, right? Whatever, whatever level they on. I mean, you know, I don't even, I don't even keep up. I don't know where they at. Are Youngs, TDs, and OBGs and all that stuff. Support the like, man. Support the platform and hitting the like button. Y'all, please listen to Crystal. Mm -hmm. Uh, so where do we begin with that? Anybody got any suggestions? I got a few ideas, but I want to hear what you guys got to say. I ain't got that long. Though joints to attack in my body, though. Okay, great. Glad to hear that. Yeah, that rolling, man. That rolling is some suspicious stuff. Where did it come from? Remember, I talked about the Corona briefly, though, about the crown, coronavirus. Corona means crown. So when you put it up under a microscope and you examine it, it looks like a crown. Right, exactly, with the youth. So, but I, I'm a firm believer, though, you can't take nothing away without replacing it with something. What would we replace it with? Good paying jobs. You think if all the youth was put together, if they were showing how to work and do, uh, be creative, uh, build things, make things, and earn a living, repairing the cognitive dissonance of organizational behavior. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. But still, how do we deal with the sincere ignorance and the conscientious stupidity, though? Because that that's that's part of it too. Salute many male minutes. You take responsibility is where you begin the healing. That's true. I agree. I don't hardly agree there. You have to take. It has to be some accountability. Crystal Burn. Crystal. She said male. <laughs> I'm willing to lead it. I'm willing to start it. I'm willing to put the pieces together. I'm gonna be talking to this guy, right? His name is Dunbar. He's out of uh, Texas. And Dunbar has got over 52, 250-some organizations coming together under the uh, NFL. He got all these NFL. He was actually an NFL player himself. And he's actually got Jerry Jones signed on and a few other owners that want to put money into our communities. Because I don't know last time you check, if you look at the percentages of uh, like I say, man, once we figure out something, we take it over. If you look at the percentage of uh, melanated people on the football field, it's probably way up there in the high numbers, high 80s at least, 80%. So if they want to continue to keep this game going, they're going to have to figure out how to get these people 
in the college. What's up? Billy Burton, what's up, man? Right on, Billy. Think different, too different. Think different, do different. Yeah, that's true. But what is the perception and experience of each individual's reality? That's also, you can't just limit it to that, you know, what you just said. I mean, I understand what you just said, but everybody's perception, Craig, of an experience of a reality is quite different. For example, I could see a car coming down the street and a dog run out, get hit. You could be standing on the other side of the street and say, nah, man, the dog hit the car. <laughs> you know, we both saying the same thing, but your perception experience of the reality that you just witnessed, you interpret it in a different way than what I did. So do we, Trap Jones, I see you, baby. I see you. Do we do we differ with, with how it happened or do we come together and figure out we both saying the same things? Salute to the chat, man. Each one teach one. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out what is the best method Sadie Nash, what's up? I see you in there. That's my guy right there, man. Be sure to drop by the Nash edition. All the visionaries out there. The Nash edition. <laughs> That's my guy, man. I love the way he comes across, the way he, he does his demonstration. You guys tap in with Sadie Nash, man. Sadie, man, we got to get together, man. We got to get together. Pamela Taylor, what's up? Hi, Mel, in chat. I'm looking forward to sitting down with Seti, man. But we've been so, man, you know, salute Local Vision. And salute to the Local Vision and the winner's circle. Right on, Local. Trap Star Jones. What's the topic? The topic is really just, it's Wisdom Wednesday. No one can make you feel inferior if you don't give consent, basically. Or it's rudeness. Rudeness is the imitation of strength. It's an imitation strength, you know. Said he wants to jump in there live, a topic of the wars and right on, yeah, yeah. Did you ever do information mines, Mel? No, uh, that's, you mean info mines with, uh, what is it, Alex Jones? No, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of who he is. I, I really never listened to him. can't fall for the okie doke no, you can't do that you can never fall for the okie doke that's right Wednesday Wednesday you got it Marlena so we talked about a few things we talk about the crisis at the um, border with the Texas Del Rio down there. We also talk about how the so-called squad what's up Bowden? How the so-called squad that uh, AOC and uh, her little crew you know how they supposed to be defenders of the constitutions defender of the people yeah they haven't said one word when it comes to the people because all we witnessed down there was black people. We saw black people being whipped. That's what we, we saw. We saw slavery. First 10, be sure to share that and subscribe to the Bullet Post, man. That's right. I like that mailbox, too. That's what we saw. You agree, Seti? No matter how they want to justify it, no matter how they want to talk about it, the man was having had a... I don't even know what the hell a ring is. What is a ring? Is that something you use to ride a horse? Still is whipped to me. Now they're supposed to be on suspicion. Them glasses, me. <laughs> you like my glasses? <laughs> yes. 
Mailroom goons are in in the chat. <laughs> They're in the chat for real. So we talked about a couple of things, and you know, I mean, we wanted to get. Uh, I just want to get my opinion out there, my little two cent in there. What do you guys feel about what you saw that day? Indeed, that was our people because we seen them as us. They resonated with us. Many documentaries of us. Yes, you're right, Seti. You're right. No junk mail. Please, no junk mail. <laughs> the whole space was the first place it went to before America. You know, when, we, when people get that we don't really give, really look at when it comes to America, that everything we know was taught to us by them. Now, they try to ridicule when people get into, you know what I mean, we get into this mode where we want to start rioting and, you know, civil disobedience and, you know, and all this stuff, right? But we, who did we learn that from? We didn't come here with that. Those things were taught to us. You know. So we got to hold our teachers accountable, right? But boy, do they like to cry about that, man. When we up, when we, when we get tired and fed up, you know. They can't handle that, you know. Trap Star Films. What it do? So anybody got any questions? Did I finish talking about Bebop? Yeah, I think I did. I just finished talking about Bebop. But anyway, that's the one I want you guys to know how much I care and love about that guy. That he's doing quite well. Yeah, we learned about this from there. We learned all that stuff, man. Because all that stuff is constructs. Everything we know about religion came from there. They taught us too. We didn't know. We didn't know nothing about that. Everything you know about religion came from another man. Everything we know about gangs came from there. The first gangs were in the 1700s, and I'm sure black people wasn't in those gangs. The streets in New York were the first gangs. We didn't know nothing about that. Everything we ever entered and involved in and engaged in were about survival. It was about survival. But with, like I know anything that anything that comes out of survival is really temporary. When you think about it. It's all temporary. OG Steve! That's my guy right there. OG Steve, man. That's the man right there. People are being biased. Let me see what you say. People have been buying saying the Haitians wouldn't even help us, but being melanated and all that to me should be out of, yeah, you're right, out the window. It could be us too. See, because guess what? If we stand by, when they came for the Haitians, if we stand by there and look, say, say the Don Moves the Key Ways and the Black Panthers are the Nation of Islam, right? More Science Temple, right? Hebrew Israelites, all those individuals, right? We just stood by and watched them do what they did to the Haitians. After they do what they did to the Haitians, they come for the more science temple. They do it then. We just stand by and watch. Eventually, they going to come from you and I. But there won't be nobody left to help us. Because everybody just stood there and watched. As everybody got sucked up. In the arcade and draconian system. The system of mass incarceration, the system of enslavement. They disenfranchised the whole people for over 400 years. This is why they knew, they knew who we were. We just didn't know who we were. I want you guys to do me a favor, right? There's a guy, his name is J.A. Rogers. J.A. Rogers, write this down, J.A. Rogers. 
he has a book called a hundred amazing facts about black people go take that book you get that book and then you get let's see a hundred amazing facts then you get you some dr bean right because the hundred amazing facts is really good it's simple it's a simple read and also get Superman the man again J.A. Rogers J.A. Rogers Superman the man and a hundred amazing facts and you get breaking the chains of psychological slavery those three books start with those three books and I guarantee you your perspective will change about a lot of things you will take notice you will be able to comprehend certain things and you will be able to spot them out when you see them. Yep, J. Rogers. That's it. These books will put you up because the hundred major facts about black people tell you everything about us. All the inventions, all the things that were stolen. A lot of people don't even know that a lot of things that we see that, that are, are in, in the innovative side of how it operates in the world, traffic lights, irons, and simple things like iron boards or whatever, was created by black people. But due to the fact that black people considered three fifths a human, they couldn't own a pack. See what I'm saying? And they were stolen. Loco has been on the ranch. That's my dog, though, man. Loco does what he does, man, and uh, he's doing a good job out there in Texas because. You can't, we can't allow people like Charlton White and, and Honeydew to just run amok and be able to um, say the things they say, man, you know what I mean? This man is literally calling us, see, because here's it again. God created melanated people, black people. America created niggas. So if that's what Charlton White want to keep referring to you, you can't forget about the sheep. And big, oh yeah, sleep and big pep, they robbed a lot of, that's the homie Rab right there, my homie, S.A. homie Rab in there, man. He's in the chat, y'all, y'all shout him out. That's my dog right, he was there, day one. Day one, he was there, on Roll Street, right there. Cocked and loaded, ready to go. Now make sure you shout him out, man. He's in the chat. Rab Compton, that's him. Unsolved heroes from my neighborhood. You right, Rab? He lived like doors down from Primo Pete. Doors down. JB was across the street, Johnny Briscoe. Scooty Nim was across the street, Juan Longino. Ears, Mark, and a Hub, T-Bone, H&H &H Sack was down the street. Dwight Jenkins, Bitter Dog, not Bitter Dog, Bruno, another Bitter Dog. Uh, Hooper. Donald Hooper, Dave Purcell said it years ago that he said it, babe. let me see, what he say? Ellen Gonzalez, Elian Gonzalez and Elian Malatombo uh, from Haiti, they were, would have pushed it. Yeah, the tribe, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. There you go. There you go, Craig. That's you, baby. Yeah, I remember that story with Elian Gonzalez. I remember that, bro. I do remember that. Man, y'all, yeah, y'all must respect the rap, man. That's my dog right there. 1960 is a 10-point platform run Black Panther Party. Yeah, I was part of that, man, as a kid. Pamela. <laughs> Big Devil said, hey, love. That's the song, Big Devil. Hey, love. <laughs> Who's that, the Delphonics? from the UK. JS is hollering you from the UK. 
I got a partner that's supposed to be showing up sometime this month. He coming from, coming over from Scotland. Yes, the Delphonics. Yep. Hey, love. Talking about getting back on track with the self knowledge, man. But go get them three books. I'm telling y'all, man. They all three is easy reads, very impactful, very informative, very eye opening. Those three books. A Hundred Amazing Facts by J. Rogers, Superman the Man by J. Rogers, and Breaking the Psychological Slaves by Chains of Breaking the Psychological Chains of Slavery by Naeem Akbar. Naeem Akbar. All three simple reads. And then okay, here's a fourth one. You gotta get this one. Shaharza Ali. Are you still a slave? And at the back of the book. Once you finish it, there's a there's a test that you can take that'll tell you whether you still slave. <laughs> I mean, I'm not I'm not laughing at that part. I'm not laughing. I'm just it's just funny, man. When I when I read the book, right, and I completed it, I'm thinking like, okay, I get to the back and I see this test, a quiz. They tell me to take the quiz. It was years ago, right, when my mind was still like in that life, right. I take the test. Of course, I find out I was a slave. So at that moment, I had to, I had to realize I had to take myself out of that, out of that definition. Yeah, Naeem Bakbar. I had to figure it out. I had to take myself out of the yes, yeah. It's a test. It's a quiz. And when I found out, Marlene, when I found out I was a slave, I was devastated. <laughs> Not physically, but mentally. You know, mentally. Priscilla Allen, what's good? Where's your head? <laughs> Kick that knowledge. Yeah, so hope you guys got the books. So there's four books. It's um, Naeem Akbar, Breaking the Cycle of the Change of Slavery, uh, 100 Amazing Facts About Black People with J.A. Rogers, Superman the Man by J.A. Rogers, and, and Are You Still a Slave by Shaharza Ali. And at the back of the book is a quiz. And you'll find out whether or not you still a slave. <laughs> but in fact, if you do find out you, you still mentally a slave, there's hope for you. Because she also addresses that and show you how you can change that. That's the great thing about the book. Yeah, vision for the black man is a must-have. I agree with you. Yeah, I know the vibe, man. I know the vibe. Well, anyway, man, it's been fun. I appreciate all you guys for dropping by the mail room, clicking the notification bell, liking, subscribing, dropping comments down below. And like it, like I always say, when that dope content hit, it'll feel like the first and the fifteenth, man. So you guys go get that literature. Get into it. Shout out to my homie Rap. One door next to Primo Pete, across from Bobby. Yup, you know the Rose Street was notorious. Yeah, the Rose Street. I used to spend a lot of time on Rose Street, Rev. You know that. <laughs> yeah, man. Y'all shout my homie Rev out, man. And hopefully next time, Rev. You know, Rev. One of these days, I'm gonna have to come talk to you, man. Get an interview with you, man. Put you on the chat, man, so they can see that you. This is real, man. You know. And we, go, we ain't going to talk about nothing. We just don't talk about old times. What you think about that? Monrovia style. McKnight. Terrell Stewart, what's good with you, Demon? Man, I'm about to bounce up out of here, man. Good night, Professor. Right on, man. I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for dropping by the, the mail room. The mail room goons are in the house. Like, subscribe, and share. Click that notification bell, man. You guys get them likes up, man. And, and until the next time, man. Let's see. I think I'm going to do God Damn It Friday. That's what I'm going to do. It's going to be God Damn It Friday, okay? <laughs> we're 
we'll do goddamn it Friday, man. So be look forward for the goddamn Friday, okay? Yeah, that's bad habit, rabbit. No, not no, that ain't bad habit, rabbit. That's rab. That's rab, Silla, from Rose Street. So nonetheless, we're out, and uh, I'll be checking back in the mail room on Friday with the goddamn it Friday, okay? Until then, we are out. Peace and love, peace and love. We are out, we are out.